When's the last time you went to the Roaring Fork? Well, after you see this next segment, I have a feeling it might be today. Chef Scott Mortensen is in our kitchen this morning. Oh my gosh, if you didn't catch the first segment, he made this honey jalapeno coleslaw. Insane, I just did a, a taste test. It's amazing. But now you're gonna share with us a rub recipe that makes uh, some amazing ribs. This is really uh, a, one of our secrets we're giving away. Uh, this is very cherished to the restaurant. Um, we're gonna make our rib rub. Okay. And what we do is we start by drying out our brown sugar in the oven. So what you do is you just lay your brown sugar out nice and thin. I like to use cast iron for everything. And we put it into a low oven at about 200, maybe 285. Why do you have to dry it out, Chef? I'll show you. As you can see, the brown sugar naturally wants to clump. Right. So it makes this clump. Once you dry the brown sugar, it becomes much more of a powder, which oh. makes it easier for us to mix into our rub. Okay. Now this brown sugar's already been toast or uh, oven dried. Okay. Another secret that we do is we take our ground coriander and we toast it on the stove top just till you can start to smell the coriander. Ooh. Now, that, why do you do that? What it does is it opens up the oils inside of the coriander seed and gives it much, much more fragrance. No kidding. Absolutely okay. crucial to this recipe. Oh, okay. So then we take our, uh, our coriander, powdered coriander, and get that in there. We're going to add granulated garlic. We're going to add uh, coarse ground black pepper. We're going to add smoked paprika. I buy regular paprika and then I put it in our smoker for about an hour and a half okay. and it really gives it an added depth of flavor. So if we don't have that luxury, we just buy smoked paprika. You can just buy smoked paprika <laughs> okay. or an honest to goodness, regular paprika will probably do fine. We just like to try and go next go level Go to the next level. Everything. That's yes, what you guys do there. Okay. And then we take our granulated um, onion and we add that in. And then our last and yet most crucial ingredient is our salt. The biggest thing is that the salt is equal to the uh, brown sugar. Holy moly, that's a lot of salt. Again, our recipes are made for our restaurant and we're <laughs> gonna be doing a lot of ribs. Generally speaking, when we do our ribs, we're smoking almost 40 pounds at a time. Oh, wow. At okay. your house and in your home, you're probably gonna do maybe three racks, four yeah. or five racks if it's a really big nine. So the rest, uh, the recipe that you gave us is for but it holds, <laughs> yes ma'am, it's a okay. large recipe, but it holds indefinitely. Okay. What I like to do is I, pour, I, I make this recipe, put it in a mason jar, seal that guy real tight, and keep it up on my shelf for future use. Because you could put this on anything. Segment three, we also use it again. Bam, see, I'm thinking ahead, thinking ahead. Right? Okay, so, so you're gonna put it on your ribs, which yes, is what you did here. So the next thing we do is we take our St. Louis cut ribs, which are a square cut rib. We rub it on both the uh, the, the meat side and the reverse side. Mm -hmm. Then we smoke it for three minutes, or three hours, and uh, cook it for four, and then it's done oh. with a little barbecue sauce on the grill and it's ready to eat. And through the magic of television, exactly. super excited. Look at these lovely ribs we have ready for you, man. Oh my gosh, look and at this And there's right the here. bone, Ooh. very warm, and they very fall off hot. The bone. I, I, and yes, you know what? The rub is so crucial. Ooh, these are hot. It's incredibly crucial. Yeah, yeah, to make sure you're gonna join me. I, I can indeed. They're hot, huh? Yeah, they're very hot. But really, really good. But it's one I'm of like my favorite really good. rib rubs in the whole world. Okay. We've used this quite a bit at our restaurant. So I said earlier, you know, great idea. It makes so much in advance. You can put it on other things. You're going to put it on brisket because yes, in the next segment, we're talking brisket sliders. We have a six-hour smoked brisket that we're going to turn into chopped brisket sliders. Where's the Roaring Fork at? The Roaring Fork is at uh, 4800 North Scottsdale, and that's uh, just right um, right down Chaparral and in the Portales Center, mm -hmm. right at the very bottom there. Some say it's hard to find, but it's pretty easy once you swallow your nose. That's how I get there. You just keep talking and I'll keep eating. Not a problem at all. Brisket <laughs> sliders coming up next, Susan. Oh, sounds delicious. Our mouths are watering over I'm here. I'm starved. <laughs> well,